One of the liveliest areas of debate among Titanic modelers is the subject of the ship's colors. We have several surviving photographs and plans of Titanic that give us a good deal of insight on her structural qualities, but documentation of her colors is curiously limited. Over the decades, an examination of colored illustrations and photographs of other White Star Line ships, most notably the RMS Britannic built in 1929, has provided some clues regarding Titanic's colors, but the appearance of some features is not known with absolute certainty. Matters become more complicated when we consider how color is altered by changing lighting conditions and weathering. This can make the task of choosing paints for a Titanic model somewhat daunting, though fortunately, compelling evidence exists that has created overall consensus on the colors of many of Titanic's features. In this video, I'm going to discuss the paints I used on this 1400 scale Titanic model, and also provide alternate choices that are more likely to be historically correct. The Titanic modeling community had many revelations regarding color in the time that this model was being built, so many of the colors chosen for this model are outdated. The majority of the paints that I used were produced by Timia. Timia has a large range of sprays and bottled paints that can serve as appropriate colors for many of Titanic's features, and do not require mixing. However, more advanced modelers might want to consider mixing paints for more historically accurate choices, particularly when it comes to the anti-fouling and funnel color. Beginning with the hull, Tamiya TS6 Matte Black was used as a base color. Even though the hull of this model was already molded in black, it's important to paint all plastic parts as to avoid a toy-like appearance. The anti-fouling was painted with Tamiya TS33 Hull Red Spray. This shade of red is likely a bit dark for the Titanic, but it is aesthetically pleasing and might replicate how the anti-fouling looked when it was wet. The yellow sheer stripe is mostly comprised of decals from the 1350 Minicraft Titanic kit, but it is touched up with Model Master FS13538 Chrome Yellow. All of the white sections of the hull, as well as all the white features of the model, were painted with Tamiya TS27 Matte White Spray. Again, even though many of the parts were already molded in white, it's important that you paint them in a flat white or a lightly weathered white color to produce a better scale effect. I would also recommend using primer before painting the hull to ensure that all your paints adhere strongly to the surface. Tester's flat black, brass, and leather acrylics were the colors primarily used on the forecastle deck. Since I used wood decks on this model, I did not have to select a color for the decks although I did spray all the decks with flat white before adding the wood. This hid the tan color that the decks were originally molded in. The bases for the winches towards the bottom right are painted with Model Master Ocean Gray. The capstans, seen with the brass tops, were probably not black in reality and should have been painted dark green. Tamiya XF26 Deep Green would likely be a good substitute. The winches should also have been painted green. Tester's leather was used to paint the masts and cargo hatch walls. All of the cargo hatch walls should be painted black. The historical color used to paint the masts, brass window frames, crane bases, and well decks was known as dark mast. An officer's quarters window frame recovered from the wreck of Titanic indicates a brighter, rustier color for dark mast, and is rather dissimilar to the dark brown leather color chosen here. Dark brown used to be a popular choice for modeling dark mast, but with current research, MMW002 Light Rust from Mission Models would have been a more historically accurate choice. In the forward well deck, the same leather color was used for the well deck walls and crane bases. Again, these should all be painted with Mission Models Light Rust. The brown cargo hatch walls should also be black. The tops of the cranes were painted with XF82 Ocean Gray from Tamiya. The electric generators under the cranes are black, but also should be dark green. The wood railings that line B deck and A deck, painted once again with testers leather, should probably be a bit lighter. XF57 Buff from Tamiya would be a better match for the wood handrails that lined much of Titanic's superstructure. The funnels were painted with a color known as White Star Buff, and there has been extensive conversation about its appearance. The color I chose to replicate White Star Buff was Tamiya's TS46 Light Sand Spray. This paint looks very nice under a variety of lighting conditions, though there is probably an excessive brown tint present in this paint. 
Nevertheless, it captures how the funnels may have looked at dusk, and it is the best spray I have encountered so far to replicate this color. The bridge roof was painted with Tamiya AS5 light blue spray, while the funnel bases were painted with AS31 Ocean Grey 2. All the benches, windows, and Marconi wireless room skylights were painted with Tester's Brown, while the trimming of the officer's quarters roof was painted with leather. The trimmings, officer's quarters windows, and Marconi skylights should be painted with the dark mast color. The arched windows outside the gymnasium were likely brown as seen on this model. Titanic's lifeboats were covered in canvas during the voyage, so I painted the tops of the boats with Model Master Light Ghost Gray to represent soot from the funnels on the white canvas. Painting the lifeboat covers a light tan color is also a popular choice these days. Note the presence of light blue spray and ocean gray too on the base of funnel 3 and the roof of the engine room skylight. Also make a note of the white water pipes emerging from funnel 3. Funnel 4 also has light blue spray and ocean gray too painted beneath it. The roof of the second class elevator is painted also with light blue spray. The aft well deck and the second class entrance on B deck have many of the same color issues as the forward well deck in terms of how dark mass was represented. The wood handrails on top of the railing should be painted with Tamiya XF57 buff or a similar color, and the deck trimmings, well deck walls, and crane bases should be painted with the updated dark mast color. As with the forward cargo hatches, the aft cargo hatches should also be painted black. The capstans on the poop deck were painted black, but should also be painted dark green to match those on the forecastle deck. On the very back of the poop deck, we can see a flagpole painted once again with the leather spray. It should be painted with the new dark mast color. Working on this model demonstrated to me just how careful modelers have to be when approaching any historical subject whose colors are not well documented. Even earnest research can quickly become outdated during the course of a model's construction. When you're working on your own Titanic model, be sure to stay up to date and test your choices carefully. Bob Reed has several excellent articles on the colors of Olympic class ships. The links for some I have provided in the description. You will also find in the description a list of all the paints I used on this model, as well as the more historically accurate alternatives that I would use if I could go back and do this project again. Thank you for watching and happy painting.